In early September, I wandered down to Chroma Seafront about an hour before sunrise at low tide to shoot some beautiful sunrise shots using the Olympus and the Nikon and also the Olympus a high res mode just to see what it's like. However, when I arrived at the beach, I was confronted by a load of rocks, diggers and noise. So actually in the end, I abandoned that and the fact that there was a load of diggers, I just thought I'd abandon the vlog. But I've come back. Now this is about two weeks later and today these um, boulders are still being put into the sea. I thought it might just be a weekend thing, but it's going to take all year and it's going to be finished at Christmas. So over here to my right, we've got um, a ship that's come in on the high tide and what it does at high tide it drops all the rocks off into the sea and then low tide the diggers turn up and they move them all into place so we're obviously at a high tide there's a tug out here and a ship is full of rock which has come down from scotland to make them see the adventures and i thought i'd try again because i want to use the olympus with the high-res mode on a tripod i want to use the olympus high-res mode handheld I want to get some sea moving. Uh, I also want to shoot it at sunrise, which is when I work the most, because this will be the most realistic time for me to use it. But I want to get the sea moving because I want to see what it does when there is um, a bit of movement, and I, I don't think it's going to be as good. The question really I'm trying to answer is, would I abandon the Nikon system for the Olympus system, which I really like, as you know, um, and we'll find out today because this is my bread and butter. This is what I do most of the time. So well, let's uh, set the cameras up. And I'll talk you through what I'm doing. Okay, first the Nikon. This is what I obviously use to use. So very happy with this. Um, this kind of scene, I'm just going to shoot it as best I can, as I would be. And the reason why I'm looking at all of this is because I'm going to Lofoten in February in Norway, and I don't want to go there and not get the best images that I can. So. Kind of what I'm thinking is, is I'm, am I going to use the Nikon? Where am I going to buy an Olympus system? I, I think I'm going to use Nikon, but let's just check. So this shot, I've, I've got the Horizon almost exactly halfway. We've got F11, 64 ISO, uh, 10 seconds. And that would be, I've got to put the delay on, find it, which is there. Yep, the delay's on. And we're just going to shoot that now. And that's going to be... The Nikon file. And there we go. Now it's not the best picture in the world. Uh, I can't get any closer because there's, there's basically uh, barriers up everywhere. But that's fine. So that's going to work. And now what I'm going to do is put the Olympus on the tripod. We're going to do a straightforward 20 megapixel one. This is 45. Then I'm going to do a high res shot on the tripod, which would be 80 megapixels. And then I'm going to do a handheld shot, which is 50 megapixels. And then what I'll do is I'll take you into Lightroom and we'll look at all four images. Right, that's the high res shot. And actually, it was shooting a four second exposure of each one. So it took a little bit longer than I was expecting. It's a bit fiddly to sort out, but I could sort that easy enough. I put it on one of the custom buttons. Um, and there it is, and the little high-res indicator is telling me that that's a high-res shot. So that's 
the normal one on the Olympus, that's the high res, which is 80 megapixels. Well, I'm now going to take it off the tripod and hand hold this. Now, the problem is, I've got two and a half second exposure on this, um, which is not going to be easy to hand hold. So, what I'd have to do is put the ISO up, which means the quality is going to be less. Um, not ideal if you're out shooting your best landscape possible. So, already, there are downsides to it. Uh, but let's do it anyway, just so we can compare. All right, let's shoot this handheld. So that is not working because, because I'm hand holding and the sea's moving, it's shooting the five or six images and then it's saying, error, composite mode not working, won't might work. And that's, I assume, because the waves are moving in and it can't then pitch, pitch them together, stitch them together. Um, it doesn't know how to do it. Even though we've got stationary rocks, a groin and the pier, it's not good enough for it to work. So in this situation, which is when I use it the most, high res handheld doesn't work. However, most of the time, I would be on a tripod. So I'd be interested to see whether the tripod picture, the high res image works or not. Because if that does, and it might just do something that we can think about. But handheld, that chance. Right, let's go back to Lightroom. Let's have a quick look at all of these. We'll have a little discussion about it, and then I'll wind the vlog up. So here we are in Lightroom, and we've got three files to show you here. So on the left, which is appearing on the right, is the standard 20 megapixel Olympus uh, file. The next one along is the 80 megapixel high res file. Remember the handheld one didn't work because of the water, I think. And then on the right, we've got the Nikon, um, straight out of the camera. Now all three of these are raw. They, have, they haven't been processed. I've just literally downloaded them from the cameras and put them straight in here for you to have a look at. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to pair the Nikon here on the left um, with the standard Olympus file here. And you can see that when I when I enlarge those, when I zoom in to 100%, the Nikon is a lot bigger. You'd expect that because it's a bigger file. So I'm just gonna increase the size of the Olympus so it's somewhere close. I wanna be something like that. And already, I hope you can see, I certainly can, it doesn't look quite as sharp but I would expect that to be the case at 20 megapixel because we, we can see the pixels clearer. If I do that, you can see it even more blurry. So I could do some work with that. I could, of course, use the high res or super res, as it's called in, in Photoshop, make that bigger. I could do some work on it. But the very question, the very fact that I've got a Nikon sitting beside it, why would I? I would pick up the Nikon and use that. So that's a far better file. So I'm not even going to worry too much about putting that together. Just to say that the color range in here is not bad. I'd say it's not bad. I would say there's a bigger color range in here. The, the Olympus looks a bit flatter the way it's dealt with the sky. And of course, you've got software that pulls that out. But I would say the little kind of light behind the clouds here is where the sun was coming up has shown better on the Nikon, and generally that's ha I'm happier with that. Also, you can look at the lights in here and you can actually see detail in the room themselves, whereas in the Olympus, not quite so much. We know they're a room, but we can't really see what they are. So for me, that means this is a better file, and if I was gonna do a landscape at Lofoten, I would definitely pick up Z7. However, I can, of course, use high res. So this is the high res file that I've given, that I've been given, and you can see how much bigger it is than the Nikon. Um, but having said that, I still don't think it looks as sharp or as clear, um, which could be down to the glass on the front, the lens. Now the lens I've bought is a secondhand um, cheap one. I didn't want to spend too much so if I had a better lens, I'm wondering whether that would probably be a little bit sharper. So that may be a little unfair. But let's have a look at the exposure. Again, the sky is very similar. We have got blurred clouds, 
we have got blurred water and that's what it's done as it's moved as it's recorded all of those various exposures it's blurred all of those together but the actual uh, sculpture itself or the actual um, pier itself is fine i can see more detail in here look if you look in the windows you can definitely see more but again still not quite as good for me as the z72 um, but certainly a lot better and with more, more glass or with better glass on the front that may well be a possibility let's just see um, uh, look at the sensors a little bit then and see what we have got as far as pushing them concerns so let's start with the, the nikon now i don't think that's already too far out i love all of this um, now we could definitely do with pushing um well, wait, let's have a look i think the exposure is about for a spot on so let's just play with the shadows so i would definitely with this lift the shadows let's see how far we can go there's a hundred percent uh highlights would need to come down just to keep that sky in and if we have a look at that there that isn't too bad now i could go ahead and sharpen this i could add some bit of clarity um, and i can now really see sorry really see in here just what we've got that looks like it's some kind of i don't know actually maybe i can't see that clear <laughs> looks like it's a person in there it's very early in the day i can definitely see all the individual lights um, no problem whatsoever so there's the nikon let's have a look at the olympus then so the olympus we're going to do the same thing let's pull the shadows right the way down sorry pull the shadows right the way up um, and just pull down the highlights and it's kind of a blue it does look kind of sharper maybe so look there's the nikon there's the olympus not a great deal of difference apart from the clouds are a little bit blurrier and the water is a bit blurrier let's just compare them side by side then so if we if we go reference left uh, and then so the reference is this one that's the nikon put it on the left and then we'll put this one on the right zoom in a little bit i make it a bit bigger so we can see it Mm. Again, if you look, I think there's no contest really. Go there, go there, maybe a slightly bit bigger. Let's get rid of that. I would say, even with the work that I've done on it, the Nikon is absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, I'm, I'm hesitant to say the Olympus is blurry because it could, and I'm I'm pretty sure this will probably just be the glass that I'm using. And I'd like to get my hands on maybe some better glass and test it. But I think when it comes down to it, if I was at Lafoten, now I like blurry water, I like blurry skies, but I would like to be able to choose when I'm going to do that by adding a neutral density filter onto the front of the, of the Z72, blurring it myself. If I want to get a sharp picture, then this is not going to do it this olympus there's certainly more detail in here i certainly like the way it's handled the sky i think the signs on the pavilion there are a lot better um i think the olympus done an okay job but out of the two sensors for me definitely going to be keeping z7 landscapes so there we go uh well, i don't know what you thought about those certainly handheld i'm not going to use this anyway not for this time of day so i guess that's kind of irrelevant it's a question of whether you want to go over 20 megapixel which is easy to use the high res shot was possible there's a bit of faffing around in the menus check in double check in it would have taken me 30 seconds maybe a minute to get everything ready this straight away um 45 megapixel 80 or 20 that's the choice. I'm not sure really that 80 megapixel is a much of a benefit. I mean, it's double almost the megapixels of this. 
but I've been using this for, for a long time and I've been very happy with the Nikon. The quality out of it is exceptional. The color rendition is exceptional. Um, and looking at the color difference between the two, it's quite interesting. You can't really say an awful lot, to be honest, but I always felt with the Fuji that the color difference or the, the range of colors in this or even a medium format camera would be better than a micro four thirds sensor. That said, the dynamic range of this is very impressive. It's a lot better uh, than I was expecting. But there we go. What do you think? Leave uh, a message down below in the comments. Let's have a chat about it, see what you think. But I'm thinking that I'll probably end up keeping this system. I really like it, taking it to Norway and all of my trips that I've got planned. This though, this camera, is gonna be brilliant for macro. And that's something that I'm gonna continue with. Until then, thanks ever so much for tuning in. See you next week. ta -da. Thank you.